Wow, what a day for the planet today. Holy smokers, that ain't no jokers. Oh my gosh. What about Tesla Maso? Oh, Tesla Maso, look at you. You did a good day too. What? We're filming already? Billy, you gotta tell me when we're filming. Oh my gosh. Welcome into today's video, guys. Hope you're doing great out there as always. In this video here today, I am gonna tell you about the stock that I cannot buy enough of and why. I am so dang excited about this stock for the next few years. It's not even funny and I am aggressively adding this stock. And so in this video, we'll also talk about why I am adding this stock aggressively for the remainder of 2020. I think I just put like $20,000 into the stock like yesterday and I plan to continue to add the stock very aggressively for the remainder of 2020. We'll get into that. And this is a stock that I am planning to hold long term, like three plus years. So it's not like I'm just trying to get in the stock for the next year or something like that. Like this is a, a long term hold planned at least as of right now, meaning like three plus years. And we'll get into how much I think this stock will go up and why I think it will start flying up as early as 2020. 21 and moving forward. So getting into all that today, guys. Hope you enjoy this video as always. If you don't mind, smash that thumbs up. This is gonna be a value-packed video. I'm gonna give you a ton of information on this company, why I think this is gonna be a huge winner for me over the next few years. So I hope you guys really enjoy it as always. Also, if you haven't gotten in Stock Hub yet, definitely check it out. It is gonna be the pinned comment down there. It's also first link in the description. Stock Hub is where you can chat with all the different investors from all over the world about a bunch of different stocks that you want to talk about. We are over 16, thousand members now in Stock Hub, which is absolutely insane, okay? And this is only six days into the launch of Stock Hub. Absolutely amazing. Super happy you guys are really enjoying that, okay? All right, guys, so first up here, what is a stock that I cannot stop buying enough of and why? It is Winning Resorts, okay? This is a stock I've been interested in for about eight years now. I've been in this stock before in the past. It's made me a lot of money, and I'm aggressively adding this stock now here, okay? Wynn Resorts has properties in Las Vegas. They have a beautiful property right outside Boston. They have a couple properties in the old part of Macau, as well as a new Wynn Palace that's right on the Kotai Strip. Amazing, unbelievable property, okay? This is a stock that here today is a $71 stock. By the way, the ticker symbol on this one is Wynn. Market capitalization of $7.7 .7 billion for the entire company, okay? So that's always the way I like to look at it. Like if I'm buying this entire company, what am I truly paying for the entire company? And I'm paying $7.7 .7 billion for this entire company, okay? Now I wanna start out with this video. We're talking about how much would it cost if I wanted to build those buildings I just showed you there? How much would it cost if I was building those here today, okay? I think this is really, really interesting, okay? So the Las Vegas properties, if I wanted to build those exact same structures on, let's say, that exact same piece of land, which is, you know, impossible, let's say hypothetically I was doing that, it would cost me about $6.5 billion roughly in today's dollars to pull off a project like that in Las Vegas, okay? $6.5 billion just for those buildings. Now, Remember, paying 7.7 .7 billion for the entire company, that's assuming the debt as well, okay? 7.7 .7 billion. Now, the Boston property, if I was getting that same exact piece of land and construction cost to, in today's dollars, that would cost me about $3 billion, roughly, to pull off a project like that. As far as the old properties in the old part of Macau, on that piece of land, with those buildings and all the construction costs, things like that, that would cost around $5 billion in today's dollars, in my opinion, to build that. Looking at everything I look at with construction, cost, land cost, things like that. And then that part of Kotai Strip that is really starting to heat up with that property, Wind Palace, that would be about $5.5 billion in today's dollars if let's say I want to build that project. And by the way, these projects take three to five years to actually build it out. It's, it's a long time because these are unbelievably massive properties. So essentially you add up those numbers there and we're around $20 billion-ish. If I wanted to copy those properties on those pieces of land, give or take about a billion dollars, okay? So let's say somewhere between 19 billion and $21 billion to emulate and basically replicate those exact same properties on those exact pieces of land, okay? That's unbelievable. I mean, there's no other way to put it. That is absolutely unbelievable. Remember, we're paying 7.7 .7 billion for the entire company, okay? Now, before we get into a lot of the good stuff with this company and why I'm so psyched about it, let's talk about the bad first, okay? Because I know if, if there's ever a critique, sometimes people are like, oh, you don't talk about the downside potential or the bad stuff with your stocks enough. Well, you know what? Let's go ahead and let's get that out of the way first off, okay? The bad is Rona, 
obviously the Rona is the bad situation for Wynn Resorts and everybody in the travel industry right now, okay? If we go ahead and check out the official website of the Department of Homeland Security and we look at TSA checkpoints, the numbers are down massively. There's no other way of putting it. I mean, look at the past, you know, few days. Let's just put it that way. I mean, look at that. Yesterday, a, a little under 700,000 people went through TSA checkpoints as versus 2.3 million last year, okay? Needless to say, the Rona has devastated travel. Travel is awful right now. There's no other way of slicing it. Travel is awful, and if you're in the business that has anything to do with travel, 2020 is probably gonna be your worst year ever, okay? I mean, just absolutely devastating, okay? I mean, who's saying, let's go fly to Vegas, let's go fly to Macau, let's go fly to Boston? Who's saying that right now, okay? Not many people, okay? I can tell you, not many people. I mean, a lot of people either are forced not to travel, don't wanna travel, can't travel, things like that right now, okay? So it's not like everybody's like, whoa, let's let's go on a trip, let's go fly across the country to Macau or, or fly across the world to one of these places. It's just not happening right now. That's that is 2020, okay? This is the year of the Rona. I mean, look at the Vegas visitor numbers in the past. Last year, 42.5 million visitors to the LV in 2019. This year, we'll see where all the numbers shake out over the next few months. We'll probably be anywhere from 8 million to 14 million. And keep in mind, January and February are pretty normal months. It was after that, you know, things tank. So who knows where we'll shake out, but I mean, 8 million to let's say 14 million versus you usually have 42 million plus visitors to your city. I mean, that's, there's no other way of slicing it. That's devastating. That just shows you no one is traveling right now because they can't or because they don't want to. Demand is so low on the strip during the week right now. Okay, weekends are decent, but during the week, because there's no convention business and a lot of you know folks can't travel during the week, demand is so bad that the Encore is closing their properties Monday through Thursday now until business gets back to normal, which probably won't be until 2021, okay? That's how bad it is on the strip. And I think that's a really good move, by the way wind, by the way, save on all that cost of operating that other side of the property. Just keep the wind side open because, you know, the, the, the amount of security and staff you have to pay to keep the other side open as well. It, with how weak the business is during the week from what I've seen down there, it just doesn't make sense to keep it open. The weekends, absolutely. The weekends is definitely enough traffic to make it worthwhile. But during the week, Monday through Thursday, no, it just doesn't make sense right now. This is the worst case scenario. Let's be very clear. This is the worst case scenario for travel related companies and stocks. It gets no worse in this, okay? A once in a hundred year situation like this, like literally you get this like once every hundred years. You don't, it's just, it, I mean, there's nothing that could possibly happen pretty much worse for the travel industry than this, okay? Just no doubt about it. It's awful. But the good news is, if we want to get to some good news, bad times don't last forever, okay? It doesn't matter what industry it is. And this is the worst situation for this industry. Bad times don't last forever, okay? Here's what I see happening in 2021 for travel, okay? I'm not just talking about travel to Vegas and Macau and some of these other places. I'm talking about travel in general. I think it's gonna continually pick up as the year goes. I think 1Q will kind of be the bottom. I think things will continue to pick up into 2Q. And when I talk about the bottom, I'm talking about bottom of 2021. We already bottomed a long time ago in terms of the overall numbers. Remember, we were down to like 100,000 in people a day going through TSA checkpoints at the, at the bottom versus usually it's 2 million plus in the United States, okay? So we've already bottomed from that. I'm talking about the bottom at 21, okay? 1Q, the bottom, and I think things will continue to rise throughout 2Q and we get into the springtime and into the summertime and then into the travel season around the holidays. I think things will continue to pick up as the year goes more and more along and the Rona becomes a more and more of a thing of the past as 21 continues to roll on. So that's the way I see travel going and obviously if you operate properties in Vegas, Macau, Boston, anywhere, doesn't matter where it is, that's really good news for you, okay? And I think 2022 will be the year where people say Vegas is back, Macau is back, the travel industry is truly back. I think 2022 will be that year. I think 2021 is just the comeback, okay? It's the comeback, but it's not really the year you say they're back to normal. I think 22 is going to be that year where you say it's back to normal. These companies are super profitable again. The world is back on track, okay? Now, why am I adding aggressively for the remainder of 2020? Like, why am I in such a rush to continue to buy, you know, shares of stock over the next few months? Why not just wait till a year from now? Or why not wait till, let's say, 2022 when, you know, things are quote unquote back to normal? Why not, okay? Well, here's what I foresee happening, okay? I've been in the market for over 12 years and I see this happen time and time again, okay? Wall Street will start buying up shares heavy in 2021 
in my opinion, of wind resorts. The stock will start getting pushed up more and more, higher and higher to higher and higher levels as the numbers continue to strengthen. Wall Street will continue to buy in heavier and heavier and heavier, okay? Why is this? Well, I think there's many different factors. I think they're gonna be looking at the visitation trends and they're gonna see the visitation trends continue to move upward and upward more and more and more in Vegas and Macau and Boston and pretty much just travel in general. The visitation trends will continue to go up. Wall Street's gonna take note of that and hmm, okay, 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 okay. Lorona, I think, will start to move to the backdrop, whereas right now, I think even to this day, Rona kind of is in the forefront of everything, although it's it's not as scary as it once was in terms of scaring consumers. I mean, remember what happened in March? People were running out to Sam's Club and Costco and Walmart and buying everything they could water. People were in full-scale panic mode of Rona. It is not like that right now at all. Never mind if you fast forward three months, six months, nine months, 12 months from now, Rona will definitely be moving to the backdrop, okay? Then, in my opinion, in 21, is gonna be talk from when, on conference calls and presentations and interviews and things like that about profitability. That's gonna be a massive step. Like, oh, we're actually gonna stop having cash burn and we're actually gonna to go to profitability. I believe talk like that will start in 2021 and that's gonna be a game changer and that's the type of thing that really wakes up Wall Street and says, hey man, are, do we have a position in win? Why do we not have a position in win? We've gotta get in win ASAP, okay? And there's gonna be a lot of travel stocks in general. And I think travel stocks in general will become quote unquote the play in 2021. I think that's gonna become the play in 2021 as these numbers continue to get better for companies across the board, especially somebody like Win Resorts. I think, you know, investors, Wall Street and hedge funds and whatnot are going to be looking and they're going to say, this is the play for the next couple of years because a lot of these stocks are beaten down massively and we got to start getting in these building positions for the 2021, 2022 into 2023 comeback ahead of time. Okay. It will become the play. All right. Now, why am I planning on holding this stock for, for let's say three plus years? Okay. Well, when it comes to Win Resorts, it is where the top 10% of income earners, the wealthy, they'd like to stay. If they're going to Vegas, if they're going to Macau, having one of those type of experience, you're going to stay. If you're at all educated on what your options are, you're staying at Wynn Palace if you're going to Macau, okay? Or one of the other Wynn properties of Macau. If you're coming to Vegas and you're really educated and you're, you're a high income earner or something like that, you're going to the Wynn, you're going to the Encore, that's where you go, okay? And that is where you stay. And why is this huge, you might ask? Why, you know, not just, I don't know, cater to, let's say, the um, the middle class or just the average person or something like that. Like, why is this so big? Well, think about it this way, okay? One is when you're the creme de la creme in, the, in a property in an area, when you're the creme de la creme hotel in these major markets, the room rates you can get are substantially higher than anybody else. Like, wins, room rates are higher than anybody else can command on the Strip and Macau and place like that, okay? So your room rates, boom. Restaurant bills, think about this, right? If you're catering to, let's say, the, the, the people that make, I don't know, 40K a year, 30K a year that are coming to Vegas, like you think they're gonna drop $500 on a, on a, at a restaurant or $1,000 or, or buy a $6,000 bottle of wine? No, of course not, okay? But if you have the type of folks staying at your property like the wind does, man, those people could drop 300, 500, 700, $2,000 on a dinner like it's nothing, okay? And not even notice some money's missing, okay? So restaurant bills, you can command so much much more club fees, okay? Excess is usually one of the highest grossing clubs in all of the world. When Vegas is busy and Excess is busy, I mean, sometimes it's like a hundred bucks just to get into Excess. I mean, it's insane and the place is packed when Vegas is packed, okay? Shopping, you command all the biggest and the best luxury retailers out there. That's why you, if you go into the Wynn Mall here in Las Vegas or in Macau, what do you see? You see nothing but the highest of the highest end stores and those stores are willing to pay you out a ton of money. And this is a beautiful site because if you have the shopping, you have the best restaurants, you have the, the clubs people want to go to, and you have the best rooms, it all feeds into each other. It all feeds into each other, and that's why the top 10% of income earners love to come stay at the Win and Encore if they're going to Macau, if they're going to Vegas. This is a phenomenal, phenomenal thing, okay? But most, and never mind, the customer service experience levels are dramatically higher, the clientele dramatically higher than other properties you can get out there, okay? But most important, okay? Let's get into the most important thing of all this, all right? The clients like this 
have the big gaming budgets, okay? They're coming with gaming budgets, if they even come with a budget, okay? They're coming with gaming budgets of thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars, or the VIPs sometimes coming with a gaming budget of a million dollars or more, okay? These are the type of people that play for thousands of dollars a hand, if not tens of thousands of dollars a hand. That is the type of people you want gaming your establishment. If you're a high-end establishment, you don't want the, the gamers with, I don't know, 60 bucks in their pocket to, to play at your establishment. No, you want the person that's gonna drop, uh, you know, I don't know, $600 on, on roulette right now, okay? And I'm talking just one play. You know, that's the type of people you want because ultimately the house wins in the end more than they lose, right? All the games are, are in their favor. So if that's the case, and you got people spending a lot of money doing this, obviously it can add up massively to profitability. This is why this is so big to be in the highest of the highest end player, okay? So buying wind stock is all about timing. I've been tracking the stock or own the stock for like eight years now, okay? Maybe even longer than that. It's been a long time that I've either been in and out of the stock or just tracking it in general. And I can tell you the stock's all about timing. It is all about timing. If you can get in under $120, you are looking really dang good with this stock, okay? That's just like historically looking, you look at a stock chart, anytime you get in under 120, you're looking really good. If you can get under 100, you're looking really, really, really good, okay? And then basically, it usually makes sense to cash out when, when it goes over $200 because you win, will go through some time periods and will in the future where things are looking so great and they're just making money hand over fist and the stock's over 200, that's usually a time to kind of get out of this one and say, hmm, let me start taking some profits, maybe redeploying those somewhere else, okay? That's, it's just all about timing with this particular stock, okay? Now, how much do I think this stock will go up and will it start flying up in 2021 and past, all right? Well, the $70 stock right now, okay? I think in two years, this is $140 plus dollar stock, meaning it will have doubled up within the next two years or around the next two years. And I think if we're going three years out, I think the stock will be over $200 as all the numbers continue to come back stronger and stronger than ever before. Wind Palace is gonna ramp up massively like we've never seen before, in my opinion, over the next three years or so. And for that reason, this is a double up or triple up stock, in my opinion, over the next, let's say, two to three years. I think it's gonna be uh, a high flyer and it's, when it starts moving, it's gonna start moving really, really fast, in my opinion, because it doesn't take much for Wall Street to start putting in and all of a sudden that stock to start flying up, okay? Now, what could mess all this up? Because we all know you guys like me to talk about the downside and what could go wrong in this whole situation. And in my opinion, there's two things that could mess all of this up uh, from happening, okay? One is a massive Rona uptick and death percentage over 3%. If Rona goes absolutely crazy and just, you know, I don't know, spreads like crazy, like the numbers get way ramped up, everybody starts freaking out again and death percentage is over 3%, that could definitely damage travel until, you know, we get a vax or something comes online and things get fixed there. So that could definitely, definitely mess up things in relation to kind of my, my prediction here. I don't think that's gonna happen. I don't think, I, although I think Rona could get a little higher in terms of the numbers, I don't think it's gonna go crazy like that where it would start freaking people out so bad and we go full into panic mode and shutdowns and all those sorts of things. Again, it's always possible and that is the risk but I don't think that's gonna happen, okay? The other thing that could mess all this up is if China doesn't wanna renew Wynn's gaming license. If that happened, that could obviously devastate the stock as well or you know, hurt the stock very badly. They would have to probably sell those properties in Macau, somebody else. That I don't think is very realistic either. I don't think either one of those is realistic, okay? Wynn just got their design done. This came out in September. They just got their design done for the Crystal Pavilions, okay? And this is an unbelievable new uh, kind of non-gaming related property they're gonna have right next to their palace property. It's got a $2 billion budget. It's gonna take a ton of construction workers. It's a build out. It kind of shows Wynn's commitment to Macau. The project's gonna be like a 36 plus month project. Absolutely massive, massive investment from Wynn. I think obviously Macau, the gaming officials, all those sorts of folks are gonna see this. Wynn's always been a great partner to Macau and Macau's always been a great partner to Wynn. And so I think, you know, with things like this happening, I don't think there's, you know, a very very high probability. I think there's probably a 1% chance or less than a 1% chance that Wynn doesn't get his gaming licenses renewed. There's just no reason for them to not get renewed in this whole situation, which, you know, obviously will be a very good thing, but it's a risk. You never really know. If the gaming licenses ever got taken away, that would be devastating. It just doesn't make any dang sense. So let's look at that property, okay? That is absolutely 
absolutely beautiful. And if you don't know what you're looking at here, I'll draw it out for you, okay? So basically, Wind Palace is there, okay? And the, the one I have circled there, that's all the new stuff, okay? So that massive new tower. Think about all those additional rooms, shopping, as well as the Crystal Pavilion part, as well as restaurants, right? All that's gonna feed into a lot more people going into the gaming part and actually gaming, right? in their property. So, you know, this is massive, massive project. This would be a great thing for Win overall and a great thing for Macau. And uh, yeah, I definitely think, uh, you know, things will work out there, okay? As far as revenue estimates, look at this, 120, 3% revenue expectations as far as growth goes next year. I would say there's a very high probability that Wynn will grow 100% plus in 2021. And uh, yeah, I was just, you know, like I said, unless Roni goes absolutely nuts or their gaming license got taken away or something that doesn't even make sense outside of those two scenarios, yeah, I can definitely see 100% plus growth for Wynn in 2021. And that will be the business coming back in 2022 will be the year, it, you know, things are fully back. So needless to say, I am super pumped about this stock. I think I'm going to make a lot of money in it. Never mind the dividend cash flow I will make in the stock over time. Hope you enjoyed today's presentation. If you don't mind, smash a thumbs up. Helps out the YouTube channel massively. I appreciate each and every one of you that is in the thumbs up squad. Also, if you want to chat more with folks about stocks, uh, go to Stock Hub. It'll be the pinned comment down there. It's absolutely free to use. And we actually even have a win resort section. So if you want to talk with other investors about win stock, you want to talk about the pros of it, the cons of it, and things like that, along with every, all the other stocks, you know, but specifically, obviously, this video is in relation to win. If you want to chat about it with other folks you can go ahead and do it in there stock up check it out it's the pin comment thank you for watching and have a great day